I have finished my first year in electrical engineering and there is so much to talk about. What should you expect? What should you look out for? Is first year easy or is it really hard? In this video, I'll be highlighting everything that went down and also sharing my experience. So uh, let's get straight to it. So starting off with term one, our first module was called Intro to Triple E. Because you're not really introduced to engineering at A levels, this module is pretty much here to go over the fundamentals, all of the basics of Triple E. So it goes over things like DC and AC circuit analysis, digital circuits, control systems, op amps, and energy. I'll be honest, I was quite nervous getting into engineering. For A levels, there's a clear way to revise. Smash out past papers, there's some YouTube resources you can use. But I just felt like for university, there wasn't really any of that. I didn't know which textbooks to buy. I didn't know what past papers were available. However, for this module, we were actually given problem sheets. And what problem sheets are, are basically past papers. They're pretty much questions that you'd be expected to like answer in your exam. So if you're in the same boat as I was going into engineering or university in general, then don't worry you'll actually catch on. We were also introduced to a module called MMA, which stands for Mathematical Modeling and Analysis. This pretty much goes over everything to do with maths and engineering. So it goes over matrices, complex numbers, differential equations, which is pretty much everything that's covered in Further Maths A-levels. So it pretty much just helps students be on the same boat if they didn't do Further Maths. So don't panic if you're going into engineering without having done Further Maths A-level. But just as a heads up, at least at UCL, they go over content very quickly. Um, not gonna lie. Apart from the further maths content, we also look at partial derivatives, we learned a bit on MATLAB, and we also had coursework, which spent us a lot on all-nighters. <laughs> I can't lie, the coursework was quite fun though. The next module we had was called Engineering Challenges. And during this, we actually collaborated with computer science students. So computer science students and engineering students worked together to create a bioreactor. Yeah, a bioreactor. <laughs> we had to fully design, map out, understand the components used in bioreactors and create one. I won't say it went well, <laughs> but the main point of this activity is to understand exactly what's going on. Understand how to regulate the temperature levels and control pH levels and pretty much teach you how to work as a team. I'll be honest, during this time, I hated it. Like I didn't really want to work on a bioreactor, but now looking back at it, it was quite fun. I mean, just working as a team to solve a problem that you never knew how to solve, you know, it's, it's, it's quite cool. As electrical engineers, you're going to be using the labs a lot. You're going to be using the labs a lot. For my first lab session, I was assigned a lab partner. We were all given a briefcase, which contains electrical components, a jumper wires, Arduino board or nuclear board, a multimeter. And it was, it was a gift, like it was actually free, so it was kind of sick. And that briefcase is used to make your own engineering project at home if you wanted to as well. So I guess consider it a gift. During our lab sessions, we were also provided with resistors, capacitors, diodes to work with, op amps, a breadboard and many more. Lab tasks are given to you and your lab partner to complete during the lab session. Labs just helps you understand exactly what is what, what tools are used, how resistors are used. At first, I actually didn't like labs at all. I felt like I was more of a theory person. I feel like I'd like to study a lot more about electrical engineering rather than being practical with it. Not only that, but I'm just not used to working with a lot of electrical components. Then after I actually got the hang of things and I actually started to gel well with my lab partner and I ended up really enjoying it. I'm not gonna lie, it was actually fun. There were also lab technicians that walk around the labs. So if you need help on anything, then you can literally just ask them and then they'll explain the solution to you or they'll help you out. One of the last things we had in term one was an Arduino project. And for this project, you actually get to choose your own partner. For my project, I actually created a water dispenser. It's not like an actual like water dispenser, but, but what we pretty much made our Arduino do was make an LED light stay on for the duration to fill up a water bottle. So as in if it takes 16 seconds to fill up a water bottle, it'll stay on for 16 seconds, that type of thing. But yeah, that was... It was definitely something. <laughs> it was definitely something. I'd say the most frustrating part was the wiring of things. There was a lot of wires that we had to consider, um, but we got there in the end. What I want to mention as well is in term one, we're introduced to these things called tutorials. Here we're split into groups and we're assigned a tutor. And what tutors are, are lecturers who are there to help answer any questions to you. So, so after a lecture, if you have any questions, to do with like the problem sheets or anything in the lecture notes that you don't even understand yourself, then during these tutorial sessions, 
make the most of them and ask them that. But yeah, that was term one. Overall, I'd say I found term one very, very challenging. It's because I was introduced to things like labs, things like Arduino boards, things that I've never worked with in my life. And coming out of A-levels, I'd never done anything engineering based. So it was definitely a new experience to me. Term one was the hardest, but I'd say it was probably the most enjoyable. I ended up doing cool projects and it also gave me time to make friends in my engineering degree, know who the lecturers are. So it was, it was a good time. Term two is when things started to get very content heavy. We actually had an exam at the start of term two. We started to get more lectures on our timetable and less lab work. <laughs> but before I say anything, just because it was content heavy, I still found it very fun. I actually enjoyed this time, but anyways. We were also introduced to a lot more modules. One of them being analog and power electronics. This module is split up into two sections, analog and electronics. Analog being anything to do with RMS voltages, currents, power, and looking more into DC and AC circuit analysis. What I mean by circuit analysis is pretty much if you have a circuit, trying to find the current, trying to find the resistance of a resistor, trying to find power, <laughs> anything like that. That is what I mean by circuit analysis. And in the analog section, there is a decent amount of complex numbers. Um, decent amount. Something I actually started to get used to in the end of things. We also study things like transformers and three-phase power systems and that's the analog part. The electronic part looks into transistors, literally studies transistors. So we study BJTs and MOSFETs, so how they behave and how to perform circuit analysis on them. This module helps you look at circuits in a different light to how you usually look at them. It just makes you so good at circuit analysis and just working with circuits in general. So things like this won't be too much of a shock to you when you keep on doing questions like them. So I actually really enjoyed this one, I can't lie. The next module we had was digital electronics. This is pretty much the computer science side to electrical engineering. We looked at things like logic gates and how they're created using transistors, binary arithmetic, Carnot maps, Boolean algebra, etc. We also had a project using FPGA boards and I actually really enjoyed the projects. But digital electronics as a whole, I'd say a lot of people found very easy. But yeah, I ended up getting on pretty well with that module. Can't say the same for the module of physics of electronics and nanotechnology though. Um, this one was... <laughs> a lot of people actually found this module really challenging. For me personally, I actually really loved this. I'd say this was honestly my personal favourite one because I just found it the most interesting. Here you learn everything to do with electric and magnetic fields. Here we dealt with a lot of vectors and a lot of laws. Gauss's law, Faraday's law, Ampere's law, um, what other ones? Just a lot of them, <laughs> I don't know. With engineering and this module in specific, there was a lot of visualizing to do. Especially if you're working with magnetic and electric fields, you know, there's a decent amount of visualizing to do. Problem sheets are cool and all, but you know, if you can get like a cool animation of like magnetic fields or vectors in space, then that'll just be way better. Which brings us to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a very effective learning platform for STEM. What they do first is help you build your understanding from the ground up. And after that, they actually quiz you on certain concepts, ultimately improving on your problem solving skills, which is the skill that help you thrive during first year engineering and potentially make you top of the class. Quick thing to note as well, just by learning a bit every day makes a huge impact on your learning. And Brilliant makes great use of this by helping you build on your knowledge for just a few minutes a day. Not to mention that these lessons are fun and interactive and can be accessed anywhere whenever you're free or available. One of the latest features added by Brilliant is vectors. Remember how I mentioned in engineering that you had to visualize a lot and you had to work with a lot of vectors? Brilliant is literally brilliant. Like <laughs> This feature enhances your ability to visualize vector problems in multi-dimensional spaces. It also helps you to master basic vector operations like dot product, cross product, adding and subtracting vectors. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash Kieran forward slash. This link will also be linked in the description. So you can click on that as well. You know what's sick as well? If you use this link, you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. 20%. So yeah, do check that out, please. And a huge thanks to Brilliant for the sponsorship. 
The next module that we had was called Signals and Systems. And this module is pretty much about looking at how data is transmitted. We learned about Fourier series, Fourier transforms. We looked at how signals could be affected by noise. I don't really want to talk too much about this module because wasn't my favorite, I can't lie, I didn't enjoy this one. Dealing with signals in general isn't too, too appealing to me. I'm still in love with the physics module. <laughs> the last module that we had was programming, and this is pretty self-explanatory. First year students are expected to learn how to program in C. I'm pretty sure next year we'll hopefully learn how to program in Python, but that's just a hope. This next one isn't really a module, except it's a thing that we have to do. And it's called Scenario Week. What a scenario is, is pretty much just a problem that you have to solve as a group. We had a scenario week in term two and it was to do with building an electromagnet. We had to build an electromagnet that would be able to lift up the maximum amount of weight off the ground. And to be honest, there isn't really a set solution on what the maximum weight you can lift is. The way to gain the marks for the scenario week is more to explain your logic behind your solution. But this scenario was stressful. I'm not even gonna pretend that it was sick. I hated it. <laughs> I know some people enjoyed it. It just wasn't my cup of tea. Person. In general, term two, I actually enjoyed just because I felt like I was learning a lot more about electrical engineering in terms of studying it. I felt like I learned a lot in this term. However, there were drawbacks. Our timetable was a lot more packed. There wasn't as many labs in term two as term one. During term two, I was still able to hang out with my friends, of course. I feel like in term two, I didn't get to do that as much, especially because not all of my friends were turning up to their lectures. That's another thing I forgot to mention. All of the lectures are actually captured online so technically you don't actually have to turn up to every single lecture available me personally i recommend turning up to lectures just because if you don't understand the question you can always ask the lecturer during a break or straight after the lecture but that was pretty much time two and last but not least we have term three and term three um was a stinker <laughs> just exams <laughs> term three is just full of exams this is where exam season is ucl students in engineering have to actually go to an exam center to sit their exams which at first was intimidating but after the first couple of exams it's just the same procedure really but yeah no lectures and just straight exams so i had to sit an exam for every single module that I sat in term two and also the maths module that I took in term one. But straight after exams, we had the last and final scenario week. And this one I actually enjoyed. This one I actually enjoyed. We had to build a robot that can solve any maze that is put in. Ain't that sick? It's such a sick way to end off electrical engineering. So yeah, that's pretty much everything in electrical engineering for first year. By the way, if you have any questions in general, about electrical engineering or engineering or anything like that in terms of uni experience and stuff like that please feel free to dm me on instagram i'll be more than happy to answer any questions but yeah i hope this video has got you somewhat excited for engineering or anything <laughs> if you have enjoyed this video please make sure to like comment subscribe comment down below what you thought of the video obviously like i just said and please stay tuned for more videos coming out later all right god bless you all stay safe stay hydrated and peace